Hello and welcome back. This will be our first real dungeon guide, the Fire Temple. I say the first real dungeon guide because it's the first dungeon that you will be doing in a group. I personally absolutely love the Fire Temple, and even though it is fairly simple, one person that makes a mistake could easily wipe the entire group. So I don't even know where to start. We have a lot of stuff to cover this time. I would say we start with the quests, then we go into the pathing where I show you what and how you should pull. Then I will show you what bosses and mini bosses are in the dungeon and also where you find them. And lastly, I will show you everything important that could drop in this dungeon. First of all, the Fire Temple does not require an entry quest. You can simply enter once you are level 27. So we start with the first quest, which is a quest that not a lot of people actually do, but I do advise you to do it because it gives you a title. And let's be honest, who doesn't want all the titles, even though we are never going to use them anyway. So the first quest is called Hanet's Last Love. And you get it by talking to Hanet in the Agairon village once you are level 32. Now, I will not spoil the story all too much, since you should read it yourself if you are interested. But I will give you a quick rundown of what you have to do. Step 1. She just sends you around for information to Veteran, into the Elton Desert, and finally back to Hanet. Step 2. Finding the Lavis. This is the first time you have to go into the Fire Temple for this quest. I will show you where exactly you have to go. You kill the fire temple just as usual, but once you are here where Sipus should be, you go straight through this entrance and you will find him standing right there. You talk to him and you are done in here and have to go back to Hanet once again. Step 3. Hanet's Revenge. Here you have to enter the fire temple once more and feed Chromeda, which is just the end boss of the dungeon. Afterwards, you go back to Hanet and you are finally finished with the entire Hanet questline. Where you finally receive a title, which is Bloodsworn. The title itself gives you just a bit of HP, defense and block, so nothing crazy good. But why not just get the title, it's really not much of an effort. Now there are two more quests which are very much known and endlessly repeatable, which are the coin quest for killing Chromid and the Kill 20 Mobs in the Fire Temple quest. Both of them you will get right in front of the Fire Temple. They are just used for a quick grind of experience in groups, since the coin quest gives you 1 million experience, and the Kill 20 Mobs quest gives you 1.5 million experience. There is honestly nothing more to say about them. So next up, I will show you a complete run through of a regular run, and a very easy path for the dungeon. There are other ways where you kill less mobs, but it gets more dangerous if someone can't do the jumps or stay out of aggro range of the mobs and such. So we'll just show you this path, which is still very quick, but also fairly safe even for beginners. So let's go. Let's just go. Just gonna pull it here. Just drag it down. Then we'll walk right past here on the right side so we don't trigger the one on the left here. And we take this patrol. Always be a bit careful about this AoE taunt. Honestly, a bit less damage than I expected. So, and right here, what you can do is you just orient. Orient yourself on this little stone here, this platform here. You can just walk here, past all of these. 
we just add this one. Perfect. Nobody triggered anything. <laughs> Very nice. I want to get this one next. Just w jump over this wall here. And oh, 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 Rotan. This is going to be painful here, as you see. I don't mind dropping aggro on this other mob. Don't make the job harder for the cleric. Okay, next is this one then. This one, we will pull it right here. And we have it. The AoE taunt is also very, very nice because not only does it get aggro from all the mobs around you, it also leads to you blocking the next attack that hits you. Just a very nice thing. I think this was crit. Well, whatever. So here you can also orient yourself on the skeleton right past here, right left of it. We'll just walk right here. And that's fine. You won't trigger anything. Just to show you that you can do this, all this stuff without triggering anything. Hey, okay, what the fuck? Hello? <laughs> okay. Always pull him right to the side, to the edge of this little wall. Because here is the patrol, the other golem, which we will pull in a second here. I would say we will just clear out to the other side because we wanted the 20 mobs and the 20 mobs are just in the first part of the dungeon which, is the, which are the spirits and this uh, golems these ones here have this I really don't care I so totally not care <laughs> oh Apparently he attacked this one for some reason. Oh. Let's 
just pull this. So we need the 20 mobs. This is why I'm going this path up here. Because usually there is a boss mob up here. Our chanter just said he is not up, sadly. But let's just take a look for ourselves. So, you know, aggro is so strong that the others can easily attack while you do nothing, basically. And the enemy is just like chasing after you for no reason. <laughs> Essence is a bit hard to to keep the aggro. Uh, well, right here would be the gunnery. Let's just do these two. I'm just hoping that our uh, cleric will come back. Chanter is actually very good or fine. Why does why does he have aggro from this one? There are definitely some um, chanters which are so against um, healing, which I think is just stupid. Here should be another map, which is small god. But sadly he is not here either. Instead he is replaced by just a random normal mob. What is this? Just move right in here. Stay with me here.
Okay, okay. Chanter can easily heal this. Oh, don't need mana. Just wait a bit. We'll wait until he uses this and try to stun him. Yeah, Assassin also did it. Very nice. Next one. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't care. It's lagging a bit, honestly. It's not very nice. It's lagging the entire weekend and this I don't know every single weekend it's about time that they get the stuff under control it's a bit ridiculous Gladiator got attacked by an assassin. Just sit, regen a little bit, because here is the patrol. We'll just let it pass and then pull this one. But our cleric is back. <laughs> I cannot use break power because I'm so slow. <laughs> Just walk past here. Now I will pull this one, the sentry goal, next. Careful with the assassin here. Control, but I think it should be fine, yes. Ouch. That hurt.
Okay, disconnect. I don't want to fight there because then someone is moving a bit too far to the left and such and then it's just over. That's it. And we move past here on the right side. We just take this one. What did he say? I'm not sure, to be honest, why people want the... the Kremit weapon so badly. I mean, I would be happy as well to get it, but I, it's not really a priority for me. Like, for some people, I get it. Like, let's say, Chromedia's Spear, which is extendable. Like, yes, I totally get that. But for the rest, you just get a bit more attack, a bit more stats, but you lose the attack speed. Because I don't think you will use um, the fusion option. On the level 30 weapon. All right, very good. Now just a quick rundown for Chromita. You just have to pull her, just use a ranged ability or the taunt or something, and then r run right into the corner. She will follow you, she will run right beside you, but she will stay there then, because she is actually ranged. She just moves on the first attack. So, as I said, you taunt her, you attack her or whatever with a ranged skill, and then run into the corner. There you will tank her. She has an ability which is called Guilty Verdict. Which is just a pretty strong AoE for this level. So all your members should be range or run out as soon as they see the skill. If they run, I think, 50 meters away, they are fine. They will not get damaged. And after, right after the skill, which does quite a lot of damage, which is like 1,000 to 1,500 or so. 
She will place traps on the ground. You can either avoid them by running away from them, or if you have a gladiator with you, the gladiator can just use his AoE ability to destroy the traps immediately and therefore no one of your team will get damaged. But that's basically all there is to her. Nothing really crazy. Just be careful how you pull her and that's about it. Now we are at the fun part, which is all the bosses and mini bosses of the dungeon. Now I just run through here with my high level chanter to show you all the bosses. I will not go much into detail about the bosses because all of them are very simple and shouldn't be a problem at all. The only mini boss that you encounter on every single run is Silverblade Rota. This one drops very nice crit rings, definitely nice to have. But also be careful not to pull too many mobs additionally to Rotan, he hits hard and crits fairly often. From here onward all the bosses now have a chance to appear, they are not guaranteed to be there every run like Rotan is. The first one on the list is Blue Crystal Molgut. Nothing much to say about him, just notice that he and the two mobs beside him will add so your team has three enemies at once, but that's it. The next one on the same path is Lava Gartnery. This mob was pretty famous back in the day because he had the chance to drop a nice golden weapon. He's pretty much the same as Molgut, where you will have to fight three mobs at once again. Miniboss number three, Tough Cepus. He is right on path to Kremit, you will just have to clear out one or two mobs more. If you do it right, you only have to fight Sipus and one Mew Golem at the same time. However, you really have to be careful with this one, because there is a Gargoyle Patrol, which could add up to four additional mobs, and that will most likely be a wipe. If you go to the left side of Sipus, you will walk onto a path that leads to two more mini bosses. Number one will be Flame Branch Flavi. And number two will be Black Smoke Asparn. Nothing much to say about those two, to be honest. They are pretty straightforward. Now back to Cepus. If you take the regular way to Chromite, there's a little path to the right. There is the last mini boss Broken Wing Kutizen. This one drops very nice crit earrings, matching the rings from Rotan. I would definitely advise you to get those, they were very nice early on. And lastly, there is the end boss of the Fire Temple, Chromite. However, there are two different Chromite bosses that can appear. The regular one is Chromite the Corrupt. And the more unusual one is Vile Judge Chromite. The difference being that the Vile Judge Chromite has more damage and more HP, but also a higher drop chance for the golden weapons. Now, just to recap shortly about the most important loot in the Fire Temple. For the weapons, as a gladiator, definitely get the pole arm, because it is extendable. As a Templar, it is somewhat similar with the mace, it is also extendable. 
The rest of the classes don't necessarily need the weapons because they're not giving any attack speed. While your level 36 weapon from the story quest gives you attack speed. And on this low level, you don't really want to spend a lot of money to fuse a weapon. When it comes to accessories, as a physical class, I would advise you to get the rings from Rotan and the earrings from Kutisen. Both give crit, which is amazing this early on. The rings and earrings also drop with magic stats from Rotan and Kutisen. And the last good item is Sipus shield for clerics and templars, obviously from Sipus. The rest of the loot in the dungeon is neglectable, basically just for money, income. And that's about it for the Fire Temple. I know this has been a very long one, but I like to do it clean and mostly complete. So I hope you enjoyed it, maybe it helped some of you, and hopefully see you on our next dungeon guide. Don't forget to subscribe and like it if it helped you a little bit, and have a wonderful day. Bye.